So it is my turn to work on my clipboard here as part of last month's challenge. I did receive lots of entries from many of you and those will be included in this video later on. I will also give you the new November challenge. But for now, let me work on altering this in a vintage style. I start by adding some black gesso to the clip and the edges. This will make it way easier for me to attach some papers. And the paper I will be using is old vintage wallpaper. And I think I have just enough to cover both sides. So I'm off and running. And my process for this alteration is super easy to follow. And like always, I will put everything I'm using, uh, mediums or anything you may need uh, explaining in the captions and enjoy some music and I will talk to you in just a wee bit. So I prepared all the papers and the photo for later on, but my main focal point will be this little baby shoe here. I found it at an estate sale. It's still in very, very good shape, hardly ever worn. They sure made them solid in those days. And I think it must be from the 40s or 50s. Another thing I found is an old photo and it shows a small boy on his tricycle and if you look at his shoes he is wearing the same model. So I like to include him and I will add him inside the shoe. Now this little shoe is brown and white but I know that they also made them in black and white and so I will change the color on it just by adding some black gesso. I don't know about you, but whenever I work with old vintage photos, I always wish that I would know more about the person, what they were like, and what type of life they lived. Anyway, that thought inspired this little poem I am writing down. Now, I am not a poet at all, so I wrote something very, very simple, a very simple rhyme, and this is what it says. I can imagine living his dream, a young boy at play. Life lived to the full, both rosy and gray. Now from beyond, he is happy to see. He mattered and his story is special to me.
So my clipboard is all done. Here you can see that the back is covered as well. And here in the front I have some texture on the clip. I also have my little poem in the corner. And then there is that shoe of course with a smaller photo and the wings. All the crackles I added the metal tools and then this bigger image which I think is a very cool photo and now of course it's time to look at all your entries as you will see I received a lot of them I think this was a fun project for all of us please take your time and look at each one of the clipboards especially so you can also read everyone's poem and really take in the details. A big thank you to all the artists and here it is. I really hope you enjoyed this lineup. Actually, I'm sure you did because all of your entries were amazing. You all did a terrific job and I want to give a big, big thank you to all of you who participated. I'm of course thrilled that you enjoy my monthly challenges and I hope that you will play along again during this month. Now, if you are new to the Four Core Challenge, please go below in my description box. Just follow the link to my intro video and that will get you up to date. It's all very simple. So you will have the whole month of November to work on this project. Before the month is done, send me a photo or two. This month we will be working on another assemblage challenge, but this time we will be altering an object. Now I had given you a little forewarning uh, that this challenge was coming up, so I hope you found something you can work with. But in either case I have a list here of possible ideas. For me to show you things that could work is a bit hard because yeah, you can use just about anything. So let me read this off. A bit swiftly. You could alter a musical instrument. Maybe you have a ukulele or a violin. It doesn't have to be real. It can be a toy. Maybe you have a decoration piece in your home that needs a makeover, a globe, a phone, some figurine, a candle holder and so on. Old paintbrushes, those big heavy ones you use for uh, painting walls, make great uh, substrates for an assemblage. Any broken appliance, anything mechanical is a good starting point. Uh, you can alter toys, a doll, a car, clocks, an alarm clock or wall clock. 
You can definitely work with small trunks or suitcases, small shelves or drawer sets, even small tables, stools, chairs and so on. There are always lanterns and lamps and so on. Now if you haven't found anything yet, maybe you have time to go to a thrift store or a garage sale, look for something that inspires you, something with interesting angles, big enough to add things to. Now if you won't be able to make it out to a store or a garage sale, you can of course go simpler with things uh, that you might find easier. Maybe a tray or a mirror or frame, a box, a can, a jar, a vase, a bottle. But if you can come up with something a little bit different, that would be great. But the most important part is that you play along and that you have fun with this project. Now don't be scared of assemblages. They are basically 3D collages and you can't go wrong. And you have different choices of how to treat your assemblage. You can either Let's say we have a violin. You can either cover it from head to toe, you can cover only part of it, uh, you can paint it or you can leave it unpainted. Uh, for the most part we will probably still recognize the violin at the end, but you're welcome to add as many bits and pieces as you like. All right, now to part two, and that will be the bits and bobs we will be using to make our assemblage and to alter our object. And for the most part, we will be using recycling materials, meaning things that you find around the house, things that are broken or things that most likely would have thrown away. So I have a little collection here, but you can use just about anything. And if you have started to collect things and you have a little stash together for this project, good for you. But even if you haven't gotten around to it yet, here are some ideas. Well, I stopped the moment to organize my tray a little bit to make it a little easier for me to show it to you and I am just going to rattle this off. Packaging like empty bottles, corks, a hair curler, small cookie cutters, uh, tops of jars, tops of bottles any size, uh, tube tops like these ones, a piece from the curtain. Um, this supposed to keep your soap dry, has great texture, clothespins, buckles, rings either for curtain or for your book binding. There is a tag from my dog Millie's collar. <laughs> Of course buttons are great, anything in your sewing kit, maybe you have some uh, empty spools like these, a thimble, a bobbin, and then of course game pieces. If you have access to uh, construction toys it's great like Legos or anything else, uh, even simpler things like puzzle pieces are fun, or game pieces as a die, there's a domino piece. Um, and then of course markers for games. Uh, these are chess pieces and these are from some kind of kitty game. Many of us have old keychains, any kind of advertisement you have laying around. Of course things from office supplies, paper clips, old keys were great, even up seashells. It all depends, the size really depends on what you're altering. You might need more smaller pieces or you will use a lot of big pieces. Uh, let's see. And the handyman drawer holds a lot of interesting things. This is a drawer handle. I have a couple of drawer knobs. I have a faucet that broke. I have a joint here. A piece from a lamp. A handyman tool. I think these pieces come from the plumbing. Uh, of course springs are great. And then all kinds of smaller doodads, hangers and hooks and washers and screws and nuts. Those are all fun. And then of course there are broken jewelry pieces. I use them a lot as you know. But it doesn't have to be real jewelry. This was probably a Halloween uh, decoration. Old watches are great. And anything you have, you can use the beads, you can use the charm, you can of course use the chain, there are bracelets, there's a ring over here. So all those things would work and lots more. 
Now, uh, using mostly recycling material would be great, uh, but you are of course welcome to use things that you have in your art room and craft room. Maybe you have a surplus of something, or maybe something that you had for way too long and you're not using it, or something you don't even like. But for this kind of project, those kind of things are perfect. Or here were a couple more things, a little wooden uh, blocks, a small little uh, bottle. These came from the dollar store and they you can find all kinds of goodies as well. So let me just put this back in here real quick. Now when you add all these doodads to your object, make sure you use uh, good glue. I usually use E6000, but you can also use uh, 3D gel or whatever glue you have. Just make sure it's strong enough to hold the metal pieces and anything that's a bit heavier. Now sometimes I also use wire to keep things in place. Wire also works well for creating extra texture. Now in assemblage you can go many different routes to complete it. You can leave it unpainted and that works really well if you have interesting bits and bobs with interesting colors. For the most part painting your assemblage is a bit easier. If I paint I first cover everything in gesso, black or white. Lately I also started using spray paint. Now I work on top of it with my acrylics or metallic uh, paints but you don't have to. You can also just spray paint your piece in whatever color you like. So the choice in that is completely up to you. Painted, not painted, partly painted, all those things work. And again, assemblages can be very simple or very involved and detailed, but both are equally cool. So do what uh, you have the time for and the materials for. All right, I think that was part two and all the little details, okay? Now, part three would be to include a movable part, something that is a bit interactive. And that can be very simple. Maybe you have something that opens and closes, like this little salt shaker. These are some earrings in the shape of light bulbs or even a little charm dangle. Uh, maybe a box that opens and closes, maybe a booklet that opens and closes, any kind of box could work. Or maybe you're lucky and you find a piece of broken toy that has a joint like this one. Those are fun and easy to use. Uh, but it's completely up to what you have available and what fits your project. But let's make sure we include at least one movable or interactive part. And for part four, well, I had this idea of playing where is Waldo. Now, no worries, we won't include Waldo, but we will include a star shape somewhere in our assemblage. Whenever I look at my own assemblages or everybody else's, I always like to see what was used, uh, kind of have a good look at the details. So I think it would be fun if we all include the shape of a star in whatever size or manner we want. This is a little wooden Christmas star. This is a silicone uh, shape. This is a 3D sticker and this too. There is a star brat, a little piece from a necklace, a little charm and I have more over here. So whatever you have available. It doesn't have to be too prominent at all but don't make it too tiny. Make it in a way that we have fun looking for it and that we have a chance of finding it. Well, if you don't have something like this in this shape, you can also substitute by painting it on or stenciling it on. Uh, again, your choice. All right, I think that's all I had. I think this will be a really fun project. I look forward to it and I know you will all come up with amazing ideas. Now, if you need some inspiration, I of course have a playlist here on my channel with all my assemblage work, but there are lots and lots of great assemblage artists out there who post their work regularly on Pinterest or on Google. So do a little bit of research. There's nothing wrong with looking at other people's artwork and I bet you will come up with some great ideas.
Whenever I work out of my comfort zone, I always find that if I go to places in my art I have not been before, it gives me extra inspiration and I learn things that are good for all the other uh, projects I'm working on. So in review we will all work on an assemblage by altering an object. We will for the most part work with recycling materials. We will add at least one movable or interactive part and we will include in all our doodads a uh, star shape. So I think that's all the info I have for you today. A list of all the items will be one more time at the end of the video as well as below in my description box. And please, please give it a go and play along. If you have any friends who enjoy this type of projects, please let them know about the 4Core Challenge. My next 4Core video will be up in the first week of December. And that will include all your entries. Now it's hard to believe that we are already uh, nearing the end of the year. Uh, but I have thought about a challenge for December already. It's going to be a bit different. It's definitely going to be simple because December is a busy month for all of us. Uh, but I will see you way before that latest by next Friday. Thank you so much for coming. Stay safe, stay creative and bye bye for now.